We are back on the Zero Hour, and joining us now is James W. Russell, who writes on a topic very close to our heart. Uh, James Russell is an expert in the area of retirement security, or lack thereof, and he is an activist in that area. He is the author of eight books, the latest of which is Social Insecurity, 401ks, and the Retirement Crisis. Uh, James Russell, thanks for joining us. Thanks a whole lot for the invitation. Oh, absolutely. It's a subject we care a great deal about, and we appreciate your contribution to it. So social insecurity uh, is about the crisis we face in retirement and uh, about solutions as well. Uh, but first, the crisis. In, in your words, what do you see as our current retirement crisis? Well, there are many ways to look at it um, and many statistics that you can marshal. The, the, my uh, whole take on it is that what has provoked a large part of the crisis has been the uh, tra uh, transfer to 401k plants, uh, taking away what were very secure and sustainable pensions and replacing them with very shaky investment schemes. And so uh, today, when you look at uh, how much people are able to actually accumulate in these investment schemes, the average person approaching retirement uh, only has about $100,000, and that will only get you about $4,000 a year in retirement. That's one of the indicators of how severe this crisis is. And, and you know, uh, what, uh, it's interesting that you mention that because, uh, of course, a lot of people have benefited from that switch. Corporations have benefited because uh, their contribution to people's retirements is fixed and limited um, when you use this kind of plan, if, in fact, they contribute at all. And Wall Street benefits because it's investing the money. But just quickly, uh, you know, back in the early 90s, I was a financial analyst in the benefits area. And I remember just thinking, but I was also somebody who was thinking he, he's going to have to retire someday. And I remember thinking, this is disturbing and nobody's talking about it. Um, why do you think there's been such eerie silence on this critical topic? Well, before I directly uh, go into that, I, I, well, uh, the main reason is most people don't understand it. I think uh, a lot of people are still uh, really hoodwinked into thinking that they're doing just fine. But, uh, you know, you mentioned the early 90s. That's when I first actually looked at my plan because I'm a state employee in Connecticut. And uh, I was in a 401k type plan and I compared it to what people in the pension plan would get. And I was just absolutely shocked. We would get about half as much in benefits. And, you know, I tried to explain that to a lot of people and they just really didn't want to hear it. Uh, I think more people are uh, willing to wake up to this because of the 2008 crisis. That was certainly our experience in Connecticut. But as your book points out, the, the problem was beginning long before then. And uh, But you also uh, are interested in solutions as well as... Um, as well as making people aware of the crisis. What are your thoughts of ways we might be able to address? I mean, we have some here on the program. What are your thoughts on ways we can address this, this crisis? Well, I think we can boil them down to three. Uh, one is uh, those people who have pensions should fight to keep them. Those people uh, who have uh, some possibility to get a pension should try to get a pension, which was what we did in Connecticut, and we were successful. Secondly, uh, what I think is absolutely huge is to expand Social Security because we have to admit uh, the program that uh, actually works and build on that program. And that can compensate for some of the losses that have been sustained because of the 401k uh, switch. Uh, the third, which I don't hear really anybody or many people uh, talking about, is that any solution has to address the people who've been in 401ks for a long time and are getting ready to retire. And what I would recommend is that they be allowed to take their accumulations and uh, pay them to Social Security in return for a much bigger benefit. Uh, because one, the problem with the 401k is it's really a double problem. It's an accumulation problem. You really can't save enough to finance your retirement. 
But it's also a problem when you retire because you don't have very good options for what you can do with your money. Uh, private market annuities are not a very good deal. If there was a nonprofit annuity available, either from Social Security or from state governments, uh, that could be a much, much better deal, and that would be some really tangible relief for people who've been in these 401k plans. Well, I think that's a great point. We're talking with James W. Russell about his book, Social Insecurity. Uh, I think that's a great point because I think we have a large number of people now whose, whose uh, corporations or employers have switched to these types of plans. So uh, I'm sure you've run the numbers, but let's say you had a couple approaching 65 uh, with $40,000 in their 401k. I mean, this would materially improve their Social Security benefit, this solution you're talking about? Well, uh, it, it would improve it. Um, it would not achieve retirement security with a, an amount so low. But let, let's take a, a number that's a little easier to work with, 100000 Okay. Uh, on the private market, uh, you could get uh, in an annuity about $5,000 a year in retirement. And that would include some sort of a cost of living adjustment. If you'd made it a nonprofit, uh, you could probably boost that up to at least seven or 8000 a year. Mm -hmm. um, I, I know that because in Connecticut, uh, the teacher's retirement system has a plan for its members where if they have savings, they can purchase a nonprofit annuity. And that's uh, you know about 2 or 3% higher than what the commercial market offers. And 2 or 3% doesn't sound like a lot, but, but it really is when you're talking about payouts, you know, the difference between 5,000 and 8,000, for example. Sure, it's a, it's a, it's a lot. And, and by the way, we have about a minute left. And so, but your solution would be not so much a nonprofit as Social Security itself would be the ideal solution. Well, Social Security would be nonprofit. I mean, it's the most efficient well, retirement sure. plan but, around. Right, but it's not a nonprofit organization. No, so, no, 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 uh, not a nonprofit in that sense, but in the sense that it doesn't operate for a profit. Well, we like the idea. And by the way, uh, for our listeners who don't know, uh, Social Security has extremely low administrative costs as well, which is one of the reasons why it could offer a better rate of return. So uh, you've published this book, and uh, you are also an activist in this area. We've got about 60 seconds left, a little less, 30 seconds. Um, what do you see as the next step in this struggle? Well, I think it's the Social Security expansion but uh, everybody has to look at their concrete situation. I mean, if you're in a labor union and they're threatening to take away your pension, you need to fight for it. Uh, if you're in a situation where you might be able to move from a 401k to a pension, which is what we did in Connecticut, you should do that. Um, and then uh, just try to be aware because the elites of this country are really have targeted uh, Social Security. And we have to not only defend it, but to expand it. They sure have. And we're, and we're unfortunately, we're going to have to leave it there. But thanks so much for coming on the program. We've been speaking with James W. Russell, author of Social Insecurity. We will be right back after this. I'm Richard R.J. Eskow, and this is The Zero Hour.